skipped over 1 Corinthians 14 on purpose. So if you see that I skipped over 1 Corinthians 14, that's on purpose because I think that we kind of exhausted um, the way that tongues are supposed to be done. I don't think anyone has any questions on speaking in tongues. At least I hope not. Amen. Mm -hmm. hey, if you do, um, come and talk to me afterwards and I will try to get you. We don't have PA tonight? No. Amen. All right. Couldn't get to work tonight. Nah, no, I'm alright. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. I don't really need a PA system, to be honest with you. I'm sorry? I speak to you. Yeah. Alright. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. 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 But chapter 14 is really speaking about tongues and the way that it should be done and all that good stuff, amen? And like I said, I think that none of us really have any questions on speaking in tongues, amen? amen. They can really fit on that enough. So you all know that the way that it's being done is not a biblical way, amen? And they need to stop, but they won't because you know, they're deceived. So, anyway, 1 Corinthians 15, 36. Got it? Yes, sir. But, I'm sorry, thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except to die. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. Maybe see. Father, thank you once again for this night. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would help us. Help us, Lord, to always. Stand firm on the truth of the word of God. Help us to God not to depart from it to the left or to the right. That, Lord, that we may continue to do the things that you call us to do. Father, we pray that you help us to stand in defense of the truth always. Never being apologetic, dear God, for standing on the word of God. We pray, Lord, that you will bless us tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we rebuke the devil, we demand him away. Holy Spirit, pray that you will fill us and help us. Lord, I pray that even in this hour, that you will help me, dear God. Lord, you know my heart. So, Father, I pray, dear Lord, that you would speak through me and allow me, dear Lord, to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, this reminded me of a passage back in the book of John in chapter 12. It was a similar thing that Jesus taught in John chapter 12 and verse number 24. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. This is what I'm finding out. I'm finding out that that uh, that the more the, the more I live and the more I serve God, that I'm understanding that we don't nearly we don't really need to know how to live in this world. We need to know how to die. Amen. 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 The thing is, it's easy to know how to live because of the fact that that we are controlled by our senses, our taste, smell, our sight, and feelings. Amen. But the thing is, when we learn how to die to self and live unto God. And the truth is, as a Christian, we don't even begin to live until we learn how to die. Amen? Amen? And, and so I'm convinced that we need to learn, constantly learn how to die. Amen? We can't even learn how to live until we learn how to die. Death is learning to yield ourselves to God. Amen? Denying, denying our own desires. This is why fasting is so important. Why is it that churches today don't teach on fasting? Fasting is important because fasting allows you to let go of the things of this world and focus on the things of God. The, the problem with Christianity is that we spend too much time focusing on things of this world, not enough time focusing on the things of God, and then when situations come into our lives, we don't have the power in order to overcome it. Amen? And so when you spend 30 hours doing, uh, I'm not even going to talk about, um, you know, some of the things we do. But I'm just saying that when you spend more time um, adhering to the flesh and what you do to the spirit, then I always told you the joke, and I feel like I'm rambling, but you're going to get it in a minute. I always told you the joke of how the, how the, 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 the man went to the missionary, and he said, Mr. Missionary, he said, I thank you for leading me to the Lord. The missionary said, wonderful. He said, how's it going? He said, it's going rough. He said, what do you mean? He said, it's going rough. He said, you didn't tell me about the battle that I was going to be facing inside. And he said, it's, it's like two dogs fighting inside of me. You know, and, and they're constantly, constantly at war, constantly fighting. And the missionary said, which one is winning? And the man said, the one that I feed the most. And the thing is, when you feed, feed the flesh more than you do the spirit, the flesh is going to win. Anything that you starve is going to die. If you starve yourself spiritually, you will begin to spiritually die. If you starve yourself physically, you will learn how to let go of the physical and 
Anyway, look down at verse number 19. Here's my first point. All of my points is just going to be verses. Amen? Amen. Look down at verse number 19. So, yes, ma'am. In our text, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19. It says, if I, if, I'm sorry, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. And some of the most miserable Christians in the world are Christians that have looked into Christ to fulfill something in this life that was never meant to be fulfilled. And so when the rough times come and the hardships come, then we find it hard to want to serve God because you, we don't understand that it's the hardships. But here's, here's a thought. So I saw this thing that said that that growth and uh, what was the other one? No, it wasn't sorrow. It was the opposite of sorrow. Growth. I would say happiness. That's not the word that he used, but I'm going to go with it. Amen. Um, growth looks at happiness and it says, I'm sorry, this just ain't working out. Did you see that? Huh? Comfort. That's it. Thank you, Pastor Tom. Comfort. That's what it was. Growth and comfort. Growth looks at comfort and growth says, I'm sorry, this just ain't working out. Because in order to for us to grow, we have to be made uncomfortable. And if we're not willing to be made uncomfortable, then we're not willing to grow. You understand? Because, un because this comfort and growth goes together. I always told you that people change because we have to, not because we want to. And when God is ready to bring change, he brings this comfort. And in, and in those moments, the real us come out. Because we can't not have a relationship with God. And then all of a sudden, discomfort comes, and all of a sudden, we're going to start pretending like we've always been walking with God. See, the thing is, there's always something that comes into our lives that pulls a mask off and reveals who we really are. Amen? And sometimes the hardship, it becomes so hard, it becomes so rough, that the mask has to get pulled off in order for the Lord to reveal you to yourself. And what good is it that you can help everybody else, but you can't help yourself? Preach. What good is it to be so wise that you can help anybody else, but then, amen. 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 Truthfully, every one of us will stand before God. Amen. That's why Paul said, if we have hope in this life only, we're of all men most miserable. Why is Christian miserable? Why are we miserable? Because we live as if our hope is only in this life. We live for this world. For this life, without understanding that we're all going to stand before God one day. The Bible says a life is a vapor that appears for a little while. And we spend the vapor of our lives worrying about the things of this world. And before you know it, it's gone. You know, I often ask. I often ask. What if you knew? That today will be your last day on earth. What if you knew? What if God revealed to you that after church tonight, you was not going to be here anymore? Would there be any regrets of the way you live this day, today, this day? Would you have any regrets of some things that you didn't do? Of some things that you did do. Somebody once told me, they said, Brother Bruce, you have to live every day as if it's your last day. Because one day it will be. One day it will be. And when that day comes, are you prepared to meet your Savior? Because time waits for no one. Amen? Amen? Life is here, and then it's gone. Amen. Time waits for no one. Amen. Whether you're 5, 15, or 55, the truth is, death calls all of us. Yes, sir. Amen?
Amen? Yeah. This is why we have to make sure that we are living our lives unto Christ. Y'all hear me? Yes, Look with me in Luke chapter 12, if you will. Look at Luke chapter 12.
He's for what church? Temporary circumstances. Amen. Amen. So let's go to number two. I'm going to get off of this. But I will say in verse 34, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. 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 Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest decisions that this older man now I've ever made <laughs> was coming to the place in my life where I said I was going to allow nothing to stop me from being in the service of the king. Amen. No job, no money, no nothing. Right. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, that has been the greatest decision. Other than being saved and marrying my wife, that's the greatest decision that I made. Amen. Verse 31. You there? Yes. Back at our text, 1 Corinthians 15. Verse 31. He said, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I die daily. Mm -hmm. Now, in this verse, Paul is not talking about dying daily as far as his, um, as far as, um, you know, his, his, his spiritual walk. He's not talking about dying daily to himself. In this passage, Paul is actually talking about the fact that in his travels and the things that he did, at any time, he could get killed. Paul realized that as he was doing what God had called him to do, that at any time he could be called upon to give his life for the gospel. Now, I pointed this out because I need us to understand that no matter what happens, we have to be prepared to give our lives for the cause of Christ. Amen. And even when things happen, like in Paul's case, he really didn't know at any given day what was going to happen. But he didn't allow it to stop him. He didn't allow it to cause him to begin to doubt what God had called him to do. He still got up every day and did what God called him to do. He didn't allow nothing to stop him. And the truth is, many times the enemy plays with our mind because he tries to stop you from doing something before you ever start out. While you are contemplating something, y'all hear me? Yes. You are contemplating. You don't really know if it's something that you want to do yet, but you're contemplating. And right there in that moment is when the enemy starts playing with you. Yes. Amen. In that moment, before the decision is ever made, the enemy is already dealing with you, already playing with you, already telling you the reasons why you can't do it, why you shouldn't do it, and why you need to go another path. Amen. Amen. But in that, you still have to say, my trust is in God, not in nothing else. I have to learn how to trust God even when I don't know what's going to happen. Amen. Anybody hear me tonight? Amen. 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 See, Paul's discussing the fact that he is faced with wild beasts every day and really don't know when the day will come when you have to give his life. Yeah. But even through this, he never quit. Right. Even through this, he never quit. Let me ask you, what is it going to take to make you quit? I ask this question a lot, and I've seen people sitting in this auditorium, and I've heard people say, I'm never going to quit. And I, I don't want to make it seem like my people leaving the church are asking to quit. It's, they're only quitting if they, if they didn't really know it was God's will for them to leave, and they left contrary to God's will. If anybody left according to God's will, God bless them. Amen? Amen. Amen. But here, I'm asking you, what would it take to make you quit? By the way, quitting has nothing to do with you being in church. Because I've always told you that people quit mentally before they ever quit physically. Amen? Amen. We quit mentally before we ever quit physically. Amen. You can still show up to church, but mentally, you're not here. Amen? Amen. Mentally, you have already given up. But see, Paul already made up in his mind back in Acts chapter 20. He said, listen, none of these things move me. I already know what's going to happen. I go to Jerusalem. He said, listen, bonds and afflictions are about me. I already know. The Holy Ghost already showed me that. He said, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Amen. 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 In other words, he said, I've already given up my life. Amen. I already know what it is to die. 
I already know. I've already given up my life. He said, we, and we, we love the verse that says, for me to live is Christ. For me to live is and to die is gain. Amen. For me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Amen. It's gain. But to live is Christ. Now the thing is, I've already died to self. So for me to live, I live unto Christ. But then when I die, that's gain because I'm going to put on a, a better body. Amen. Anyway. So there you have it. Number three, real quickly. Look down verse 33. And I'm done. Say amen when you see it. Amen. Amen. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt yes. good manners. I used to hear my dad say that all the time when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I never knew until I started reading the Bible that that's actually a Bible verse. Mm -hmm. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Anybody know what that means, by the way? Anybody know what that means? What does it mean? Yes. 
I don't want to see things like other people see. Amen. I, I don't want to see what you see. Amen. I'd rather see what God wants me to see and I'll leave everything else alone. A lesson that I learned in the old church we were in, I didn't talk to nobody because I, I wanted just the Lord to deal with me and show me what I needed to know. And that's, that's how it was. And that's the way that God told me I had to live my life. And by the way, that's the way you have to live too. You have to learn how to shut everything out and say, Lord, show me what you want me to know. Show me your way. Show me your direction. Teach me through your word. And that is the truth because people can have you looking at stuff that's not even real. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said this. He said, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And when you get around people that only judge according to what they see, you better understand what that is. I'm just telling you. Amen. It's your pastor. I love you to death. But the thing is, the enemy takes people captive because of the fact that we're not taking biblical principles and putting them in action. And a biblical principle that you know that you don't begin to put in action, the very thing that's supposed to bless you will have the opposite effect. Amen. Anyhow, remember this, especially you adapt people. What you focus on, yes. plus what you think about, plus how you feel, because what you focus on is what you're going to think about. And what you focus on and what you think about is going to affect how you feel. And what you focus on and what you think about and how you feel is going to be how you act. So a lot of times an action is not something that is, what's the word I'm looking for? Separated or it's, uh, it's not, um, uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Isolated. Your action a lot of times is not isolated. It's not an isolated event. A lot of times an action was something that was thought about, felt, and seen way before it ever turned into action. And so the thing is, if you see yourself begin to act a certain way, you have to go all the way back to what you began to allow yourself to focus on. Do you know this is why the Word of God is so important? Do you know this is why the devil fights you in God's Word? Because when my delight is in the law of the Lord, then what begins to happen is I begin to see things as God wants me to see. My delight is in his law. And in his law do I meditate day and night. So if anybody come to me with negative stuff, I can speak the word of God over me because the word of God is what I delight in. And the only thing that can help me in those moments is God's word. Preach, I don't have time to read the Bible. But then you're just too busy. You got time to eat? If you got time to eat, you got time to read the Bible. Amen. Come on now. I ain't got time to eat. Maybe you need to fast and get God's word. Amen. Amen. I ain't got time to read the Bible. Man, if I had a down every time I heard somebody say, Preacher, I just ain't got time to read the Bible. What? You got time to breathe, but you don't have time to read the Bible? Amen. Come on now. I like trying to brush off. You got time to use the bathroom? Amen. Oh, I ain't got time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I can't go to the bathroom because I ain't got time. <laughs> really? David said, as the, as the heart panted after the water broke, so panted my soul after thee. Thing is, when your desire, yes, hmm, that's going to bring me to a whole other thing. But let me just say in closing, the problem is not that you don't have time. The problem is you don't have the desire, and that's a bigger problem. Somebody once said to me, "If I'm a child of God and I don't have a desire for God's word, something's wrong." Yes, sir. If I don't have a desire to walk with God as His child. Something is wrong. I got one or two problems. I'm either vaccinated or I'm not saved. Amen? Amen. Say, preacher, I really don't have a desire to work with God. Then you need to check and make sure that you're in faith. Because one of the telltale things about this child of God is that you have an unquenchable desire. 
if your if you don't have an unquenchable desire to walk with God, and you know you're saved, then you need to confess your sin and get right with God. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's the issue. That's the issue. You need to get right with God. Get back in the right relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Don't let nothing stop you. Believe me, I was this close to tell him how he had to preach today. I, I've been sick ever since yesterday. I came to church today, I was still feeling it. And I laid down on my couch and I said, man, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to make it tonight. Uh, and it ain't too late. I got down here about, I guess about 3 o'clock or so, maybe a little before that, about 2.30. And I said, it ain't too late. After I read my Bible, I can still call Papa and tell him to preach tonight. But then, as I just did what I knew God wanted me to do, started feeling better. Right before it was time for me to come out of that office, I don't know what happened. Just all of a sudden, I felt better. Amen. And it's almost as if I wasn't even sick. Amen. That's just the grace of God. Amen. Yes, that's the grace of God. It truly is. But that's what happens. Is that you always want to have something to try to stop it. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. I think this couple's retreat this year is going to be the best that we've ever had. And I'm going to tell you, the devil's already fighting with some of y'all. He don't want you to come. He's already fighting. Already giving you excuses why you can't be here. Already. Well, I'm just going to tell Pastor that I wasn't feeling good. I ain't going to go. I'm just going to say, I, you know, I'll think of a reason. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you know, the truth is, I think this is going to be the best one. Because the enemy has waged war against our homes. And a lot of times we don't have the ammo to fight it all. And you get in a place. See, that's why people that, that use guns, that's why they love gun shows. Because it allows them to you know, test it out. Tomorrow, this will be our gun show. Amen? We're going to come in here and get some ammo on how to fight the enemy. And really, it's not even fighting the enemy. It yeah, really is looking to the Lord so that we can get our homes back. This is about opening up to everybody. We need ammo for our Amen? Whether you're married or not, if you are head of a home, you probably should be here. Amen? I'm just saying. But that, that's on me. Amen? Father, thank you for this night. Thank you for your goodness your mercy. Help us through God. As we contend for the faith, as we stand for your word, as we do what you call us to do, dear God. We have so many opportunities. But Lord, help us not to be like the one, dear Lord, who had the opportunity to go in and see the goodness, but because of his unbelief, he was able to see it, but not participate in it. Father, help us, dear God. We pray that you forgive us of our sin, that you wash us under your shed blood, and help us, dear Lord, to be discerning about what we do and who we do it with. 